Since the MiG-15, the Mustang was more a target than an opponent. Its days as the world's premier fighter were behind it. However, in the early phases of the war, it was the sustained ferocity of the Mustang fighter bombers that brought time for the 8th Army to dig in around Pusan and finally halt the tide of the initial rush of the North Korean Army. The inertia of history may have already run down the technology of the piston-engined fighter, but the Mustang represented the highest point of refinement of that lineage, and there were things a Mustang could do that nothing else in the inventory could. But it did them at a price. Back with the National Guard, the planes flew on to the mid-50s in United States use, and a very few stayed with the Air Force for another 20 years as chase planes. The P-51s scattered all over the world, to China, Australia, where the last Mustangs were made, Sweden, almost all the South American republics, the Caribbean, and elsewhere. They formed the backbone of the infant Israeli Air Force and flew in combat with real effect in large numbers for the last time in the 1956 Desert War. They were still frontline planes in air forces like that of the Dominican Republic and Indonesia into the 70s. In addition, they became the plane of choice for many civil flyers, for acrobatics, racing, or simply for pleasure. pilots still love them. They may have their little vices, like the tugging torque of the propeller that drags at the plane in takeoff, but with their thuggish power coupled to their dependable airframe, they are a totally different breed to other civil planes and retain a mystique that is unmatchable. very well built to start with, and the examples still flying are maintained with such fanaticism and love that they will probably still be with us into the next century. to describe any particular plane as the greatest fighter of World War II are admittedly always generalizations and of little value. Certainly one can list a handful of types as the outstanding planes, but to then pick one is asking for an argument. In this program we have repeatedly described the Mustang as the preeminent fighter of its day, despite the well-argued claims of those who back other marks, like the Focke-Wulf 190 or the Spitfire. However, the Mustang stands apart from both in the same crucial way. The Spitfire, like the other European designs, was a short-range fighter, basically defensive. The P-51 was comparable in speed and maneuverability to the Spitfire I, and about the same length and height. However, it was roughly twice the weight, which was given over to the fuel it carried, giving it a range that was around three times that of the British plane. This factor makes obvious the point that the Mustang, unlike its comparable European contemporaries, was an offensive fighter. Its part in the strategic campaign in Europe was decisive, and it was not simply, as the German adherents of the FW190 claim, a factor of superior numbers that gave the Mustang its success, it was the better plane. Compare the others to one another. The Mustang stands alone. <laughs> 